Hi, uh, I'm Kanchana Velagedara. So today I'm going to talk about the uh, the inner source pattern, which often seen in fintech. Um, the why that I'm uh, quoted the fintechs. The challenges are very common across the fintech companies, as the engineering teams are found later uh, after the after they define the business. So uh, to scale up the customer services and scale. Uh, when when the when their financial services are being scaled up, that is where they found the engineering team. So, because of that, the initial stages, the fintech companies used to buy the technology from vendor base uh, uh, vendor base support, as well as vendor base software. So, with that, over the years, we often seen that uh, there are many uh, uh, engineering silos formatted within the company. As, as well as the scaling up architecture has been limited. So there, there will be limitation for the, the scaling out the, the software as well. We often see in, the, in FinTechs, there are deep hierarchy structure. So process frictions um, is a key that when you have to maintain a big hierarchy, the de decision making gets slow. Uh, the security vulnerabilities, the outside regularities that the financial institute or an organization need to follow, are uh, very, uh, uh, very intense. So we, because of these reasons, uh, we set a common context and common. We identified common co forces when we try to implement in a source within a fintech company. Uh, let's move into a little detail about that how this all uh, happens, how uh, we can begin the inner source uh, within an uh, organization. So what I'm, right, uh, what I'm presenting right now is the inner source pattern. Uh, the way that a company can approach to implement the inner source in the very, very initial stage. So at this time, there will be an uh, initiative coming from the leadership that we need to do in a source within our company. And we need to uh, make results down the line in, in given time. So the, the information that I'm presenting right now, so we have the inner source program and we have a inner source uh, review committee. While having that set up, we approach each team uh, to be considered the inner source. The, it's it's uh, the reason uh, behind that when we talk to each team and each in individual who want to get on boarded with inner source they will join with a the passion they will they will have a motivation to achieve something and s resolve some of the engineering problem using the inner source uh, methodology this is exactly what's happening in the the open source communities as well they are key drive is the voluntary base uh, uh, commitment and also their passion to the technology. The idea here is get the same momentum with, from our organization, uh, each individual commitment to achieve the inner source in a better way. When we begin, we go out there to the team as an inner source office staff and then explain what is the inner source is and we explain what are the company goals and we try to identify what's the team interest on inner source in which level and which best practices that they want to want to follow so we bubble up their problem and oversee that problem and we want we look look for their commitment to resolve those problem uh, in the best way that they can work it out. So the team knows their own technical problems. They would come and say, these three factors that we wanted to resolve with the inner source, we have less collaboration, we have less mentorship, we have the less model modularity in our software architecture. So we wanted to achieve these three factors using inner source methodology. When, when that commitment comes, the team rep represents each individual uh, aspects also. The individual matches one of, one of these uh, 
best practices as their own goal. And that obviously uh, coming from the, the organization goal. So we will see a match that from top of the organization up to the individual, we have a shared goal. That's, that's a very good context to begin with. Once we begin with that context, with the concept of the shared goals, and down the line, we will do the adapt adaption. In the adaption, obviously, we are going to find the, the, the find a lot of challenges. Uh, I'm going to talk about three main challenges that we will face down the line when we are actually executing this. Organization challenges. We talk about the, the security vulnerabilities and the deep hierarchical setup and the process frictions. Those are very common in a large or a medium or even a startup of a uh, fintech company. And the cultural, it'll be a big shift for people to understand what it means the inner source than a day job. And we have to establish the meritocracy within the teams and the community pyramid. Each unit of the organization, the smaller unit, could be the, the team. And within the team, we identify a community pyramid. And the way the individual achieve their individual goals, which matches with the team goals, through the community pyramid, with the help of the culti mentorship. And it's not the, the traditional management hierarchy that we see in a general organization. The technical challenge. So when we doing this implementation, we might come, the middle management come uh, sometime later and, the, and then they could complain, oh, this is not working. So there should be some reason why it's not working. So there, there is a technical participation, mainly the, the huge engineering silos that we often see in FinTechs there should be an ar architectural participation and the infrastructure. The process frictions uh, cause tight up the open, uh, tight up the, uh, the infrastructure as much as possible to uh, protect from the cyber attacks and protect from the other security vulnerabilities. So we, we have to have an open in infrastructure, infrastructure within the firewall. And right, and same thing with the which goes. We have to produce some business out of this process. So how do how do we how do we do that? And for that, we need some technical um, needs of tools to measure inner source uh, success. And those measures should be uh, correct measurements, not as simple as just a few commit message, uh, uh, the commit messages. So grow and the scale it would be the second phase. When we have a good working model for open source at the first phase one, we will come up, we will have some green lights to go for the phase two with the individual and team credibility and some business results. And we will have some tools to measure the success and proven um, concepts that this is working. Let's stick into this use case a little further. So pattern of the shared goal in inner source, uh, it's really working. Uh, the reason is in this particular example that we have a team and that team wants to do more modularity, more collaboration and mentorship. So we need to buy in the management for all this new thing. And we, we should, um, uh, and the management should understand what the community is. The team is not just a hierarchical setup, but it's a community. There are human uh, engineers working in there. They have a real motivation factors to uh, uh, grow up, up to the ladder in the community. And uh, we had to define the mentoring responsibilities. And we had to give a, a proper infrastructure for them to uh, code the commit and comment on the commit, review effective uh, pull request um, 
uh, effective way and uh, feedback me mechanism. So those are the forces when we initially start with, we had to figure out uh, those could be negative forces, there could be positive forces as well. So we need to figure out, that's why those are on red color. And the one of the team members in the team could say, hey, I want to become a uh, quality mentorship, mentor. So in that context, the team want to produce more quality mentor, mentors down the line. So that helps to figure out, so there's a child, uh, individual who really motivated on that and the team really motivated on that and the organization want more quality mentors. So we could see we can come to a resulting um, context that we need to buy in the management. We had to build more awareness in, uh, of the management. It's not the typical hierarchical setup now. We have uh, the uh, competent-based community pyramid within our teams. So we need to recognize these extra efforts coming in from engineers to become a, a quality mentor. And we have to recognize them in personally and publicly. And if we also have to assess, have been been effective as uh, mentors for the other teams. So we need to have, we need to find a mechanism and we have to drive towards to see if the men mentee has achieved their goal within the community. Uh, more mentor responsibilities on the job will help uh, reducing the other obstacle for the mentee so then we encourage that mentee to uh, do more uh, of uh, mentor responsibilities than any other. Uh, often seen in fintechs that access is restricted as much as possible. Again, that regularities, security vulnerabilities play a role in there. So we, we have to find the mechanism as whatever the resources available in the organization that given an access without uh, violating the security. For example, if the manager has to add you to the, the team repository uh, in a formal manner with the, usually that takes a request, request process, which will go through entire hierarchy. Rather doing that, we would encourage individual to request and get automatic approved, but still we have a record in there so that the individual uh, developer doesn't have to wait for someone else else's uh, approval, but it's still it will be recorded. So if something happened, we we have the traceability. Uh, also, the uh, in that way, when someone coming into the organization, what usually happens is manager give the privilege to get the access for any repo. Uh, the particular reports, but in this way, the the engineer can actually uh, get the access with the with, for a certain time period, uh, raising a request, and then that will automatically approve with the record. And the preserve communication is very important uh, when 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 we have a shared goal with the team and the individual. So team need to keep keep uh, close. Uh, monitoring about how we are progressing on this uh, shared goal of producing more quality mentors. And this, uh, the, if the individual has a conflict of interest of the inner source uh, pattern, uh, the inner source solutions that we, they need to bring in, so they, they might either need to find another, another team that who are doing that. But for this example, so, there's a team agreement in between the individual that they share a, a common goal. So, so at the end of the day, um, after some times, while we're practicing this more, the pattern, we will see uh, that as a resolution, there are more quality mentors uh, are coming into the organization and they are practicing this daily basis in multiple teams. Thank you everyone for attending for today's session. Thank you.